I am unashamed. What about you? You know, I've been real impressed you know, since the hurricane about our community, people helping each other out. It's just like everyone gathers and just helps. I mean, I think about that, the verse, love your neighbor. So I'm giving Jeff and Jessica a report because their house is two houses from mine. But since they're living in Austin and they, they kept their house in West Monroe here and they're renting it out. Well, two trees fell, one across their driveway and one right next to the house. But the house is fine. It did just, you know, they had some chicken coops and all. And so, uh, you know, we're having this conversation. And he's like, man, I just, I really miss the neighborhood. And he's like, you're not going to believe what happened to us. I said, what? You know, where he's at, and they're in the South Texas, but they're part of this, uh, what's it called, the HOA? I had a big run-in yeah. with them. Homeowners know. Association. Yeah, the homeowners. He said, we had a big run-in. And I said, what happened? He said, so we have a trampoline in our backyard. And we get this letter from the HOA saying, we need to remove the trampoline. So Jeff's like, I go read the HOA manual, and it says there's nothing in here about trampolines. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine to have a trampoline unless one of your neighbors deems that as disrupting their lives visually. Mm. So I said, Let's, so let me get this right. So Jeff's out there taking down the trampoline because a neighbor said that it was disrupt the sight of the trampoline is disrupting their lives. Yeah. Well, I was so shocked, you know, because I had my run in with the HOA. And of course, when they got, they saw it on national television, they all got embarrassed. So we went from having no chickens. That's what the whole thing was over. You couldn't have chickens. Now everybody's got chickens because they're like the organic play actually worked. Because these same type of people, everything needs to be organic. Well, why not? Why go to the grocery store and get some eggs when you can raise your own eggs? Yeah. So then when they they found that vein, but in this vein, I just think there's something wrong with our culture when you can look at something like that, people jump on a trampoline and say, no. That, tri and, that triggers me. And then you have to disassemble it and tell you, I said, Jeff, you need to move. Of course, I live you know, right beside him. So we're going to have to so break. So it it's in a subdivision, like yeah, a neighborhood? Yeah, it's in a subdivision, and, you know, we have some disrupt. They call it disruption, which I wasn't familiar with. It's disrupting their lives. Disruption field. But Jeff said the same neighbors, because then he had to find out who, who they were. We found so ourselves like, in a situation in America to where neighbors are dreaming up any type of scenario so we can have a rankle here. I mean, they're looking around saying, unless everything I see pleases me, I'm going to revolt against it all. Yeah. That's where we found ourselves. It, it's the opposite. Have you had uh, issues with your neighbors? I don't have any neighbors. <laughs> yeah. But where did, why did, when did everybody get so sensitive? Oh, that's where we're at now. I mean, I mean Jeff said the same neighbors. Look, their dog, Jeff's dog, it, the most loving dog ever. It's a big, giant black poodle. Uh, and I really like this dog. But it was like barking at them as they walk, you know, by the, you know, just down the street. But so the, the couple stopped because they have dogs. And they were like, it's okay. It's fine. You're, you're fine. They, and Jeff said they were talking the dog like it was like, you know, I mean, look, I love dogs. Talking to their but, dog? Or the, yeah, or, or they or were talking to their dog saying, it's going to be Don't okay. be traumatized. It's okay because another dog was barking at their dogs. Jeff said, I should have known right there. They're going to say no to the Jesus trampoline. brought it up when he said, you, you strain gnats. You straining gnats. Yeah. Trying to find some little problem with your neighbor. You go to great lengths to just strain gnats. He said, when in reality, you've got a plank in your own eye, but you're yeah. trying to strain gnats yeah. and everybody else's. And, and that's the type 
mind that does this kind of stuff. It's of the evil one. Well, we're sitting on the porch this past week, and um, Jill had some friends over, had like a little, I don't know, a little uh, get-to-know-you party, open house for some, because we're homeschooling this semester, uh, just because everything's crazy with COVID. And we're like, this is homeschool. Let's hit the road. We're, we bought a sprinter van. We're going to go out west. So we got some plans. Well, she's well, good for you on the homeschooling because we're about down to it. Yeah, we're about down you, to you it. You can't well, trust think, the education system now. Well, in most schools, I think, are not even meeting. No, they're not even meeting anyway. So we were at a private There's school. There's no God with the, with the school system. Well, the one we were at was a, a great school. It's just that I didn't want my kids covered up with a mask eight hours a day. I just I, yeah. I didn't think that was spiritually helpful, but um, so anyways, we're sitting on the porch. I wasn't out there. The ladies are sitting out there having coffee and or whatever she made for her, little croissants or whatever. And on our front porch in our yard on my property, and a man drives up, and he he stops right in front of my house, and he rolls down his window, and he he starts screaming at the girls, "Hey, hey, hey, where are your mask?" Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I'm like. I wasn't out there, but but they were telling me that, that, that this just happened. This guy just drove up and screamed at us and told us to put our mask on, sitting on my front porch. So even in my own home, on my own property, that triggered him, and yeah. he, he was offended. He he was really disturbed. The mask by, police. Yeah. Even, even, even on your own front porch. Ah, I, you know, I, I just don't know what's happened. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's... We have a world... Full of pussy cats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I don't either. When I thought about Jep telling me that story about the trampoline, what's weird is when I right after the once the hurricane had subsided, yeah, which everybody around here, then they all go looking, you know, see what what happened to somebody else under the great code, yeah. <laughs> the great code, and I call it great code that one should live under make it your ambition to live a quiet life mind your own business that guy it's not minding his own business he's hot on at your children about whether or not they have a mask on their face or not Mm -hmm. he's he's doing the opposite quiet life mind your own business work hard with your hands doing something that's good so your daily life will win the respect of outsiders so that you won't have to be dependent on anyone, including the government, the neighbors. So the, 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 the way to fulfill that is move to the middle of nowhere to begin with. <laughs> well, I think it's why we need to share Jesus as our purpose. I I mean, to me, when people say, why are are we here? Why don't Jesus just come back? Why are we waiting? What's the whole deal with if God's eternal? Why did he insert time? The love of Jesus solves the entire entire dilemma. He solves it all. Having said that, you want to respond unfavorably, but you realize that, Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love mm-hmm. your neighbor mm-hmm. as yourself, which can be extremely difficult at times. It's very difficult for me to love someone who is sending their dogs to counseling because my dog barked at theirs. That's why it reads, so, if it is possible, <laughs> try to live at peace with all, if it's possible, yeah. try to live at peace with yeah. all men. Yeah, be it's not, careful. It's not possible be careful <laughs> to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Yeah, that's also there. That's Romans twelve. Look at that. You're not going to be able to fix that in the short term. No. This this is a this is that an introduction to, become, to Jesus. To be a pattern. You're going to have to change completely. Transform if you're being disrupted at the side of a trampoline. We're going to have to go to Jesus on this because your right. whole life narrative That's right. is going to have to change. Because what I was going to say is... Every I- time, Jace, when you see that kind of mind, there is no Jesus there. If he's there, you won't see that. Well, obviously. But what I was going to say is what happened during the hurricane were, you know, trampolines were a problem. Yeah. Because 
the wind got most of them, and you saw trampolines in strange places. I mean, right out of my driveway, two, there was the two power poles that were both snapped, and the cables were laying across the road, but tangled up in between was a trampoline, somebody's trampoline. So mm. at some point, it went airborne, Yep, hit the lines, tangled it up, and ripped the whole thing down. So when he was telling me this, I thought that he was going to say that. I thought he was going to say, because there's a hurricane coming, mm-hmm. and it might become a projectile, you which would be you, reasonable. Might, you might blow your kids away. But, oh, no. This is just the sight of your kids jumping on a trampoline causes disruption in my life. That's bizarre. That's the strangest thing I've ever heard. So, look, now Jeff is headed to the meeting, you know, manila folder in hand. Is he going to fight it? Well, he's got, I mean, uh, he's going to just get some clarification. Yeah, get some clarification. Here. But, but he's food. already taken down the trampoline. They well, I said, Jeff, the difference in me and you. They is- need solid food. It's for the mature who, by constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. When you're looking at a trampoline with kids playing on it across the road over there mm. and it bothers you, there's nothing evil about that. Let's take a it's quick a good break. Thing. The kids are out there having a big time. Let's take a quick break. So the first thing we walked in today, the first thing Phil says is go get the little girl, also known as Angela, and make us some more of that coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which you guys are coffee snobs, I have to admit. I mean, that's one thing y'all don't play around with. I don't even with. know what that means. A coffee snob? What does it, that mean? It's like you, you're a connoisseur of coffee. You won't touch it unless it's excellent. Oh, well, no, that's... So I, don't if that's I don't understand the snob. No, part. I don't either. I, it, I just it's like call that... Like, I'm not touching it unless it's excellent. I would say that we're coffee common sense guys. <laughs> well, I've I know I've put coffee in front of you guys before. You've turned your nose up at it, but one coffee you've never turned your nose up at is Black Rifle Coffee, True. which is owned by veterans. It's a veteran-owned company um, operated um, in these uh, premier small batch roast-to-order coffee uh, for people who love America. They import the highest quality beans from around the world, and always roast to order their coffees. For you, after you place an order to ensure that you receive the freshest coffee available, uh, they develop their explosive coffee profiles with the same mission focus that they learned as military members serving this great country. So all Black uh, Rifle Coffee Company uh, blends are available in like a whole bean and ground varieties. They also have many roasts available for purchase in the single-serve coffee rounds as well. The cold is this. The, the snobs, Yeah. little water, a lot of beans. Little water, a lot of beans. A little water, a lot of beans. Well, y'all pack it in there, I like, too. Uh, I like that philosophy. So here's what to do. Uh, you need to go to blackriflecoffee.com slash fill. Again, that's blackriflecoffee.com slash fill. And enter the discount code fill, and you get 20% off your first order of any coffee products, including the Black Rifle Coffee Club, which we're we're members of. Uh, so again, make sure you use that code to get twenty percent off. It's blackriflecoffee.com slash bill. I, mean, I thought the same thing when I saw those trees laying down in my yard in the neighborhood. I thought something I've said many times. You see, trees do not need hugs. <laughs> they don't need them. They're just there. You have an order of things, which I go always go back to Romans 1. You have God. You have humans. You have animals. You have vegetation, yep. trees. When that starts getting out of whack, that's why if you're stopping having to counsel your dog and you're over there hugging trees, you know, in a big storm, that's just a bad idea. They worship created things rather than the creator. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's and that's where the feudal thinking comes from. But I think you're hitting on honestly the biggest problem in Western culture right now is that it or it's it's a side effect of the of the virtual community, the virtual world. If you're not having face to face interactions with people and you can sit behind a keyboard and be and, and be a warrior behind a keyboard you, you never really have to deal with the implications of your of your communication, and so I think we're we're getting so into ourselves, 
Like, I mean, we're just becoming a narcissistic society where the gospel does fix that because it forces you to recognize, number one, that you're sinful, and number two, that if you're in Christ and you're saved and redeemed from your wicked rebellion, which number three causes a, the opposite of entitlement, it causes thankfulness. It's really not them. It's the one in them. We don't rise against flesh and blood, against the powers of this dark world, the authority, the rulers, of yeah. the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Once he gained control of a man, he'll start stopping and say, I don't think you ought to have your kid jumping on a trampoline. You say, "It's there, there's far deeper issues with those and people you know than you crazy? think it is. The neighborhood pays money to the HOA to yeah. tell them to enforce these stupid rules. I mean, that's the dumbest thing. I, I mean, I thought not being able to have your own chickens was the yeah. dumbest thing I'd ever heard, but no. Um, what do you What do you think would happen if Jeff went into the homeowners association meeting and said and filed a complaint that he was disturbed by someone complaining uh, 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 by someone being disturbed about his trampoline? Would his disturbance well, then cancel disrupt- out their disturbance? I think he'd need to use the word "I've been disrupted." By the disruption. Yes. That's what he needs to do. Because he kept saying that word. I said, why do you keep saying that? Anything so like, that's that, the term. That's what it's under. It's, it's Anything that ends with association, <laughs> remove that from planet Earth. You know, you say, well, who's now the homeowner's re- association, association in your neck of the woods? I said, I am the homeowner's association. <laughs> One man. Here's the way it's going to be. So if they get behind the gate, yep. you're the king back I don't there. have neighbors. No neighbors. And the reason I don't have neighbors is because of what you said. No one drives by well, me you, and says... But what happens? You're supposed to love your neighbor, but you don't have any. That's right. So I must reach... <laughs> I must, so you're I must, I must leave my house and get beyond where I live and well, get you, out of a locked yeah. fortress to actually yeah. say, how you doing? Pretty good you've on got, up the road. You've got Red. I mean, he's up the road a little bit, and he, he's he's a neighbor. You have neighbors. The redneck, the redneck called me yesterday. He said, Phil, yeah. He said, I'm over here. I'm driving around over in Jackson, Mississippi somewhere. <laughs> he said, uh, Becky run out of gas in, in the in the generator down there. Can you get, go get some gas for her? He knew I did, he, didn't mean, I didn't, he didn't mean go to yeah. the gas station. He called me because I am the gas station <laughs> down there where we're from. And he said, could you get them a little gas to get the generator so they can stay cool, get the air conditioner? I said, I'll get it. So I drove up there, fired the generator up, got a couple of five-gallon can of gas, shut the generator down, had in the back of the truck the gas. I pulled up in front of Red's house. I knew I wouldn't have to get out. Look, when Rednecks, when it comes to gasoline and stuff like that, I just pulled up there, didn't say a word. I just pulled my truck up there, and rednecks just come out of the carnage, the, 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 the heap of debris, and I don't know what all was in the yard, but it was a lot. But I just saw two or three rednecks coming. I'm just sitting there in the truck. They pulled them five-gallon cans out of there, kind of nodded their head, you know, and I went on back down there where I started from. No words were exchanged. I did a good deed for my neighbors. I provided the gas. You got to remember, this is like Fort Knox to get to that gas. Video surveillance, you know, watching them gas tanks at all times. Because you've got your own gas station down there. I got my own gas station, but it's under 24 hour surveillance. So if they steal it, so the first thing they did when I put them in there, they're looking around at these little round things. They said, He's filming this. Oh my goodness, we can't steal this gas. Don't mess with him because he'll get you on camera. And then you got to go spend a few days in the clink, clink if we try to steal his gas. That's the world we live in now. Those are my neighbors. Do you have your own? And Jace was right. It's difficult sometimes to love your neighbor, as far as it depends on you, on me. Okay, I'll go get them the gas. That will alleviate the the, the threat of them stealing it. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. What's weird so provide is it. all provide this. I the gas. I'd rather give it to them than to try to go down and steal it. Then, then the question is, do we get a hold of law enforcement or do I let that ride? Mm. So what's, what's I try to this? err on the side of being generous. They know who I am. They've never heard a cuss word come out of my lips. They're up there talking trash. I'll put up there. But when they need something, they'll call down there. Can we borrow your tractor because we got a tree? And I said, yeah, you can borrow it. So I'm good to them. I'm good to them. 
I've covered my tracks all the way with them. What's crazy is this kind of paranoid. So they can uh, you can delusional love the <laughs> conspiracy theories that Phil gets into that seems kind of crazy. When a hurricane hits, he actually <laughs> seems really smart. He's, you know, he's the guy he, you want to be with. He's got his generator. He's got his own gas station. He's got all his you know. He's got weapons. food. They thought I was food. jokingly saying at one time, but in the redneck world that surrounds me. I'm serious. I am nine one one. When they get in a bind, they call down no, there. I didn't you think know. you were joking, but I will say this because you couldn't go to a gas station for two days. I mean, yeah. unless you wanted to wait two hours. That's correct. It just sheer panic to get around that. I've got two thousand gallon tanks that we have to keep clean and all of that with pumps on them. Yeah. Just to get around the fact that you try to get up there, here comes a blow or a tornado, yeah. or what, and then you're trying to get gas. There's a line five miles. I mean, I, I But it's no. not, and I don't mean panic just saying, as a with negative. A little, with a little planning, is... you can survive on planet Earth, but the whole thing comes down, rely on God and he, he alone, and practice self-reliance. You rely yeah. on God. But that's as far as it goes. But on it your took reliance. you seventy four years to actually have the payoff on the hurricane. Well, you, know? you live and learn. Yeah, yeah. you know, but but for those for that week, for that week, Phil was on the top of the mountain. Well, he yeah. still, I mean, he still's got his setup though. So he doesn't, nobody, he didn't have to go yeah. to town to get gas. You know, he, that's that's a pretty good setup. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You got to remember, make it your ambition so that you won't be dependent because oh, once it. you once you go down the dependent <laughs> Phil, road you're not dependent on no. anybody else i'm telling you man <laughs> i got it <laughs> yeah. and you're i'm not- a low tech man in a high tech world but i saw all this coming i thought okay I, I, i'm beginning to understand now you I better get- be self-reliant rely on god trust he and him only but governments of men and you know neighbors and all, yeah. you like love them. You try some. to try to live before them so they can't get you on anything. I like hear you to, say one cuss word, you're out. I'd they're like, like to oh, see they're a, like us. A, a HOA come down there with a notebook and, and, and <laughs> write down all the things that are disrupting to their lives just on Phil's property. Yeah, you got some disruption going on down there. Yeah. If you had if you had neighbors, you would have yeah. some disruption. Some major. You want to test your fire. Arms, you are free to do so <laughs> in and around my abode. I got old Phil Riley over there. He lives a quiet life. He and his woman are yeah. right next to us. You know, if I see somebody attack them, love always protects. I would go over there and take a bullet for them. They're my neighbors. They live inside the compound. So I go over and have yeah, them. Yeah, that is true. Can. You do have one neighbor. I forgot about him. Phil Riley and, oh, his, he, and yeah. his woman. And he had he had uh, Burley for a while. Well, my, my Burley own. was not a neighbor. Burley just showed up and didn't leave. <laughs> well, he built for, a house, right? Well, he built a house, but he doesn't stay there. He stays with Phil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I asked him, I said, I don't understand why you built a house if you never stay there. I said he should have kept it. I gave him the land to build it. Yeah. Owned. I gave it to him. But he stayed. He built the house, you. sold it, and fleeced uh, Gordon. <laughs> and that's your dad. Well, then Gordon gets it for a while, and then he fleeces Willie. <laughs> but it came back around, and now it's back with the Robertsons. And the, what started the whole thing is I gave it oh, the land free of charge. I didn't charge him anything. I said, here it is. You can have the land built on it. And the he fl- built and, on and, it, made him some money at it, and then the next one. They so they were going right up. So now Willie. Money. So Willie has. Oh, let's take a quick break. So this past week, I, I did a, a a test. It's a genetic test, and they tell you what you can and can't uh, eat, or what you shouldn't eat, and then uh, and other products you shouldn't take. You should have just asked me. And also, I yeah, should have asked you. You could have told me. Yeah. Well, the one of the things they told me to stay away from was these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which is your your Tylenols, your your uh, ibuprofens, all that kind of stuff. Um, but luckily, I, I, we have a, a, an average, a, one of the, our sponsors, Omega XL, is a great anti-inflammation product. Well, that's about the only thing you take, right? Yeah, that's it. it. It's the only pill you take. That's it from the muscles of New Zealand. That's the only, and it's not a pharmaceutical. I wouldn't take that. Yeah. It's fish oil, muscle oil, hmm. from the pristine waters of New Zealand. And then he chases it down with a can of sardines. <laughs> and so sardines, 
little. That's what you chase it with. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of fish oil, so muscle oil, and you're good to go. So you're 74, mm-hmm. and you're out there with Dan. Zero aches and pains. And Dan's and Dan's about to pass out. He Zero. can't even hardly move. Yeah. He Dan needs more down. sardines, and he needs some of this wow. XL Omega. Omega XL. So if you want to get started, order Omega XL now, and you get the second bottle for free. Visit OmegaXL.com slash Phil to get this uh, free extra bottle. The second bottle is free. That's OmegaXL.com slash Phil. Or you can call 1-800-844-4888. That's 1-800-844-4888. Yeah. So started out, uh, I was generous. I said, Beryl, he said, I'd you know, show like to live down there. I said, mark you off a spot around there. He said, how much are you going to charge him? I said, I'll give it to you. He said, what? I said, I'll give it so to then you. He, he went it to drawing up papers. It? He went to, I was just going to give it to him. I thought that would do it. My word was enough. Well, he lived he, in it for a few years. And, then and he, he lived moved. on it for a few years, but he, but he drew up papers and drew off a pretty mm-hmm. good little chunk and came up there. And I said, how far does this go? Let's see what he Yeah, I said, Burl, you, I told you I'd give it to you. Boy, you, you're drawing a, <laughs> these lines are pretty wide here. He got as much as he thought he could get away with. I said, that's fine. So I gave it to him. Well, it ended up. Yeah. It's back down. Willie, my son, owns it now, so it's it's back to where it was before we started. Yeah, Willie's yeah. got it as a, like a, like a river have, house. You might yep. should have considered some legal advice before. <laughs> <laughs> Just be generous, Jace. <laughs> well, it, got, it created a pretty good mess. <laughs> so now Willie bought it. But it, it. didn't come from me. So, I was the one that said, here. This is the strangest nothing. story I've ever heard. Willie wind up buying land that you gave away. That is correct. Well, it was land. I gave it and to then Burl. A house was built. Burl saw a way to make some money. Built the cabin. Fleeced Gordon, his daddy. <laughs> Gordon saw how he could make some money. He fleeced Willie, not realizing that I had given it to him to begin with. But you, but but to be fair, you can turn a profit without fleecing somebody. I think they. Yeah. yeah so I mean, Willie's not fleeced. No. If, if you can never we- fleece Willie because he's got enough money to where it's not. Doesn't matter, but he uh, but he probably over he probably it's overpaid for it. What I gave away came back. It's still adjacent to me, and since it's Willie, that he's my son. Every once in a while, I go over there. In fact, I went over there and I checked the uh, the surrounding to see how many trees because it's surrounded by huge trees. Yeah, not a one had blown down. But he's kind of tucked underneath that hill there a little bit. I think that helped him. And we're a little bit at the base of the hill, so the the big winds. We're coming hard, but being at the base of that hill was just enough to tone it down, tone them down a little bit. So yeah. I was fortunate. Yeah. Well, the, the ultimate fleecer in Scripture was Judas, by the way. Yeah. There, there's a good segue for you. Uh, John 12, we were talking about uh, Judas last week and just kind of his mentality of um, really wanting to take advantage of Jesus. One one thing we didn't mention um, in the last episode that I thought was interesting about John 12 was that Mary really understood the worth of the, of the person that she was worshiping. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Jesus really is worthy of a year's salary. What's just astounding in these mm-hmm. particular texts in John chapter 12, twice it says... The, what the prophets had written that fit this time frame. They took palm branches when Jesus showed up, went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now watch this. Blessed is the king of Israel. That's once. At first, the disciples, uh, yeah. And the next says, don't be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming. Remember, John the Baptist was hollering, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Jesus from that time on started saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The disciples were sent out and their message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They're all saying the same thing. Now here's a look at the king. My question is to all the religious world. If the king arrived riding on a donkey and everybody's saying it is at hand, 
how could you ever conclude the kingdom of God is not here on planet Earth? It's here, and these are three members of it talking to an audience 2,000 years later. You understand my point? Yeah. The kingdom is here. We're operating underneath a constitutional republic, which makes it much easier to function in today's culture. It's way easier if the kingdom of God can function under a country that says from the beginning, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They've been endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. It's easy for the kingdom there. We have found ourselves in the last three or four months, we're seeing how fast they can turn on the kingdom of God. The Democratic platform, I read it. There is no mention of God in their platform. Not one word. Nothing about Jesus. Nothing about God. Nothing about the Spirit. You say, they've turned from God and they're wanting to turn this thing upside down where the kingdom of God will be persecuted severely. They don't want us to sing past edicts. Can't sing songs. You somebody get the corona every opportunity. You can't meet together anymore. They just attack it. They burn the churches out there on Washington, D.C. Burn that church. Are you like, they're 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 anti-God. Well, I just think it's their base is not the religious world. So I they... think they're the forces of evil. <laughs> yeah. They are satanic to the core of their being. That's what I think. The last thing he wants is God in the equation. Yeah. And now we are at each other. And the forces of evil are Valid running headlong. Point. We're going to find out in this next election where the godly are. We fix to find out. What that. I was going to say, what's interesting when you go back, when you're talking about the kingdom being predicted, you know, that goes back to Daniel 2, the greatest kingdom ever. It'll come during the kingdom all of kingdom. iron, the but Romans. One thing I had a, you know, I, I, I have about five guys that I study the Bible with, and it's not a scheduled meeting. We just will have a thought, and somebody will send me a text. It's usually the same five guys. And, and people always say that, well, how do you, you know, what is the key to studying your Bible or reading the Bible? To me, since I'm not very disciplined with that, I have guys who I have relationships with who ask biblical questions. And so, and I have enough of them where it's almost a daily thing. But one of them put this on me, and I thought it was pretty interesting. He said, you know, when you get to John 12, Jesus, you know, everything had a shadow from the Old Testament. Yep. And he went back to Exodus 12. He said, you ever notice that Jesus basically replicated what happened when the Israelites were under the plagues and you remember all that and you had to put the uh, blood on the door frame or whatever. Yeah. Pharaoh what was being one one pestilence and plague after the yeah. next. And I was like, well, what's this got to do with John 12? And he's like, well, John 12, 1 says six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany. And then he's, he's like, six days before the Passover. You know the significance of that? And I was like, uh, no. And then he read John 12, 12. It said the next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. He said, well, back, when you go back to Exodus 12 and you read verse 3, this is really interesting. It says, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take, it, take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor having taken into account the number of people there are. So this, you know, we start talking about what you do for your neighbor here. And we have these plagues going on and we're going to sacrifice a lamb, which seems barbaric in our culture. I mean, how about that? You know, trying to fly that in our culture today. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't work. So then it gets to verse six of Exodus 12 and says, Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Well, when you do the math, and I just introduced it enough where if you want to go down that rabbit hole and look, you'll find that Jesus on the same day that they did of the month became the lamb 
That's why when the woman, uh, Mary, put the perfume on him, preparing me for the burial, it was the same day of the month, which was a mirror image of what happened with the lamb. But Pretty then we, when you take that into account, remember when John the Baptist in John 2 said, look, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Yep. And so I just thought it was incredible. I'd never noticed it Here before. Here comes your, the one that the lamb so that I will pass over you. That's exactly that's, let's, right. Let's, uh, let's break real quick. So to me, I'm like, first of all, how did Moses, if we give him credit, which most do, of writing Exodus, how in the world is he concocting a story thousands of years before that now Jesus, claiming to be the Son of God, coming from a virgin with the ability to do all these miracles. Which is Genesis 3.15. Is now riding into Jerusalem on the exact day and emulating what happened like at Zachariah the said yeah mm-hmm. and now he's on a donkey they're saying here's the king of the greatest kingdom that will ever be on the planet because it's not of the planet that will last forever how did all this tie in because all they did was find these scrolls thousands of years apart and it and it fit yesterday I told those people before I baptized them I said, when they ask you, who are y'all? I said, you tell them, we're members of the kingdom of God. We have a king, Jesus. I wrote a book about it, Jesus Politics. That was my point on the whole thing. It's how the kingdom of God functions within a man-made government. Mm -hmm. The problem with man-made governments with all their, and especially ours, with all of its great qualities, our government can't remove our sin and our government can't raise us from the dead. We love you. We would die to protect you, but 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 you're not the end. You're not the one we're dependent on. We're dependent on the one who can raise us from the dead after he's cleansed us with his blood. Yeah. So here in America, that used to be easily done to function as the kingdom. It's becoming more and more difficult. But the good news is when we're really under duress and we're really under persecution, that's when we do the best. That's right. The king, the yeah. Romans decided they were the kingdom of the earth that will last forever, and they turned on the kingdom of God, fed our brothers to the lions and tigers, and slaughtered them. You say, what came out of it? We're still here, and Rome is no longer a world power. Yeah, their empire good. is gone. The kingdom is still here. We won. We won then. And we'll win this time, too, no matter what happens to the United States on who you finally put in there, a heathen or not, Joe Biden, whatever. You're like, the kingdom will still survive. No I think that, that's a, that's an important um, note for Christians, for sure. I mean, I think that's what Jesus said. He came proclaiming the gospel. It's an eternal kingdom. It's an, He came proclaiming the gospel and the kingdom. That is correct. And, and you know— um, And you can't separate the two. You can't. But it bothers me a lot when we talk about, for me personally, just my own personal walk in, in, in Christ— um, it was liberating for me to understand the theology behind the kingdom because I had I'd been raised not by my parents so much, but just by kind of church culture, thinking that you come to Christ, uh, you repent of your sins, you grind it out for eighty years, and then you get to experience the kingdom. And that's not yeah. that's not the Bible. That's not what's well. Like. We've we've already touched on that many many. Jay times. said it right when he yeah. said when he said everything points. To Jesus and your knowledge of him. Yeah. Because you'll know the truth, Jesus, the truth, and the truth, what he did, his death on a cross, his, will set you free from Satan, sin, yeah. guilt, law, and the grave. Mm-hmm. Well, that's game, set, match. Yeah. Any well, way you that, want to slice he, it. He says it right here in 1230. He says, the vo- this voice was for your benefit because God speaks, which is kind of funny. And because he says later, uh, that was for your benefit, not mine, which is a humorous moment. <laughs> All of a sudden, they th- some of them thought it had thundered or whatever. But what he said was awesome. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. 
So here's the Lamb of God. We just went through about the Passover because the significant thing in Exodus 12 was that the Lamb needed to be without defect, which we know what that represents. Well, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice because he ne- he ne- he's the Son of God. He came from a virgin, and oh, yeah, he never sinned. And so now here's the lamb riding on a donkey, which was used to herd the sheep. Uh, you know, with the, the, it wasn't like he was just doing this for the heck of it. No. Nope. He was trying to show you a picture, and he had just elevated the status of this woman, Mary, because she got the principle that he's the way. That, you know, let let me prepare what's fixed. Now, she got it, oh, kind of yeah. like John the Baptist did when he's because it always intrigued me that John the Baptist, his impression of Jesus, which is what I do in my speeches. I try to, I try to find creative ways to get people to think. What is your image of Jesus? You know, I'll have them close their eyes and picture God because I want to know what they see. Most of them, nothing. Because it's hard to live in this life with all that we have going on if you don't have this faith being sure of what you're hoped for and certain of what you do not see. And so for years, I missed it, just like a lot of my friends. I was trying to get to heaven, and I would, like what you said, I, I was thinking, boy, at some point in heaven, we're going to experience the kingdom. And I missed the point that when you experience Jesus, oh, you got it. Here and the future. I mean, this is it. Because the experience of the kingdom, this is key, it, it only happens when you experience the king. That's right. There's no kingdom and it, without and the king. it's explained in That's Hebrews exactly 1. Right. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. They all spoke of, as Jace would say, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. But in these last days... He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, king, and through whom he made the universe. He goes back to the beginning. The son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided pure purification for sins, John 12, when I'm lifted up, I'll bring all men to myself. After he did that, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. The only way to, he just said he's going to be purification of sins. He died. Well, he would have had to have been raised to go back and sit down at the right hand of the father. So it's all right there. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. And he starts down this big list. He mentions in verse 8 of Hebrews, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. That's what that's yeah. what Daniel said, you know, way before Jesus got there. And righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. Hmm. So here we are. We're righteous because we're in Jesus. He made us righteous. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness is received a righteousness from God. You're like, is made known. Let's uh, let's let's break for just a second here. I wanted to read the explanation of why Mary was so valued in Jesus's eyes. When he got to John 12, 28, he replied, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified which she had put the perfume on him to prepare him for that. Yep. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And, you know, we think about that when we see the destruction of a hurricane. You say all this stuff fall and die, but we know what's going to happen, which goes to the creator or the creation demanding a creator because you see all this death and then you see life. It, it, it starts over. It's Jace, that in big your mind. Track, a big track of timber we just got over there, huge trees, hundreds of them fell with this wind. Mm-hmm. But the other day I pointed out to my daughter and her man, we were in the four-wheel and I'm driving along and I stopped. I said, look out there on the ground. What do you see? 
Now, this huge block of timber with gigantic trees, which the hurricane blew down a lot of them, but underneath on the ground, the seedlings, the little trees, they're this tall. They're there by the millions. As far as you could see up through those big open woods, it was trees about that tall. Hmm. I said, reckon we're ever going to run out of trees here? <laughs> One acorn falls, and there's a tree. One another acorn falls, and there's another tree, and another yeah. acorn. That's what Jesus was talking about. Well, I noticed about. that when I was gathering all the limbs up. I mean, incredible. I, I, would, I would take the limbs and put them on a tarp, you know, and move them. Yep. But then what was left was all those acres. That's where I thought about this. Because then he said the man, uh, but he says, it. but if it dies, it produces many seeds, which he was talking about his own life. Yep. The, Jesus's death was going to produce life in, in all of us. That's why he said that when I'm lifted up, I believe that's on the cross. Look, look one of them big oak that, trees, even if it dies and falls, you say, what's underneath it? In a circle around of where the acorns have been falling, yeah, it's just solid trees. If it dies, yeah. you say thousands come up. But that's a principle that keeps paying forward, even our in a, even in our own story. I like I die with Christ in baptism, Romans six, and then I'm raised to live a new life. I mean, there's always a death and then a rebirth when it comes to the, yep. to, to what Jesus well, people, is talking about. Just like acorns are hitting a, the ground. Yep. People have a hard time they, they understanding die, they're that. They're raised from the dead. It makes people uncomfortable when they read this next verse because it, Jesus said the man who loves his life will lose it, mm -hmm. while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And that's that's uncomfortable to people. They're like, what in the world? What? This is my life. Yeah. And so it's almost like a spiritual suicide that he is validating that people are like, how, how, how can that be? Of course, when you understand, when you get to things like baptism, that's why we focus in on the surrender part. You know, the Romans 6, it says you died. Or, you know, Colossians 3, you died and your life is now hidden in Christ. Yep. And you realize by surrendering, you then come in contact with that spirit, just like Jesus did. Yep. And then all of a sudden, what happened? He came back from the dead, and here you are on the earth, literally spiritually raised, yep. living through the power of the spirit with Jesus as your Lord, God as your Father, making a difference in the world through his power, not yours, and experiencing the joy, even at the same time while people are saying, well, you're missing out on all of life's treasures. Yep. Well, you know? what, did, what did he what, think about the what Jesus is setting up here too, especially in context of the Holy Spirit? In just a couple chapters, he's, he says, "Unless I die, unless I die and then go away, and He's not going to come." So you even see the Spirit, even in a even in in the sense of just His His Him coming to to Earth to dwell in the believer. Like that has to happen from this rebirth, mm -hmm. from this. From a young this. lady the other day during one of my interviews that they do before you, when you release a book. So one of the people I was talking to, it was a young millennial chick, and she was sitting there. And she said, I read your book, Mrs. Robinson. She said, but it seems like if you're going to live the way you're talking about, it would take so much of my time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. I said, yep. yeah. It, well, it, like take, it takes a lifetime, honey. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, you know, I would like to. These are some, some really awesome things you come up with. She said, but it seems like it would just take so much of my time, time to do that. She wants an add on. Oh add yeah, you think she didn't about realize what, it was it was her t entire life. Oh yeah, it's all of it. What people when you I, I made a statement in a sermon one time offended people because I said, you know what I hate about life because of this verse where it says. You know, let he who hates his life in this world. I said, I hate the idea of making a ton of money and then retiring, enjoying the pleasures of life, and then dying and then just leaving whatever I have left to, you know, for someone my kids. else to fight over. I said, I hate that idea. Well, people found that offensive. You know why? Because that's all they're doing. That that, that's the goal of life. And I'm like, yep. if that is your goal, if that's what you want to experience, you're going to be frustrated. You really you're going are. to miss out mm. on yep. something greater because that needs to be offensive 
if that's all you have is a big bank account and retirement and you're just sitting around enjoying pleasures on a boat and then you, you know, you die, which I've often said, it's so weird. People live their whole life to retire and then they can't do anything because they're old. It's like somebody would say yesterday to me, they said, why would you spend that much time that's so precious to us? Why would you spend that much time with a group of individuals who have come from all over the United States? I said, they, they're, they're fixing to participate in eternity. They will live eternally. The ones that responded here, they're going to live eternally. That's what they received here. Yeah. I mm. took the time to explain that to him. That girl, you know, they're saying it takes so much of your time. She missed the whole point. People yeah. are gaining life and immortality from Jesus. Oh, that's right. I mean, well, what they missed, you go back to the hurricane and the trees falling down. And some people in life, I've, and we've seen them on TV, the, and you know, I was made the joke about the tree hugging. Some people spend their whole life, you know, planting trees and trying to make a difference, and we want to make it green. Look, and I love trees, and I'm all for it. I'm one of the most environmentally friendly people on the planet because I love the creation. We've got thousands of trees been planted yeah. over But there. look, one storm blows them all down. Now what? you got to have something bigger on your objective. You, you can go around and hug them when they hit the ground. It, it, it's just not good. You're, you're spinning your wheels here. You've missed the creator over the creation. Wow. Yep. Well, uh, uh, we can go a little bit longer here for our Blaze TV subscribers. So that, 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 that's if you're a paying Blaze TV subscriber. So if you pay the money, you get bonus material. You get, uh, then we get the good discussion. You get to go behind the paywall. Who thought this up? Was this one this of your... was uh, This was a Zach branch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just part of the deal. It, help, it helps pay the bills. Um, so go to blazetv.com slash unashamed, and you'll get a $10 off uh, discount. So... Uh, um, you could also watch this on on the Blaze app and any of your devices. You just click on the Unashamed Show for our overtime features. But so we're going to go behind the paywall here uh, just for a little bit. I want to because uh, you, you reminded me of a story I want to tell. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else. Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.